Hello, hello, my fellow Hawken pilots, it is Hobbs once again. This time I'm bringing you a guide on Siege. And yes, this is actual footage of me playing with actual people on a rather interesting map. This is actually a Siege mode on Bunker, which isn't normally available, but I'll have more, uh, there's a funny story behind all this, and I'll talk about it more in this description, or if you're from my forum pages or my Steam guide, I'll include that on the written section. But for now, I just want to talk mostly about the Siege guide, because Siege is my beloved game mode. I love playing this game mode. However, not enough people know how to properly play it. People will tell you all the time, like, oh, the battleships, or, like, there's a lot of problems with the gameplay. No. I personally feel that Siege Mode in itself is very, very solid, and I'm glad that developers came up with this game mode because it's absolutely a blast to play. However, most people, they just don't know how to play it properly, and so my solution to that is I am going to teach you guys how to properly play Siege Mode, and... In case you guys are doubting of how I'm going to talk about it, I mean, I've lost track of how many Siege games i played, but I know I've gotten at least the Siege general achievement, so you, I can say that I've at least won a Siege game at least 50 times, and that's 50 times more than most people, so. <laughs> but enough of that bragging out of the way, let's get on to the Siege guide itself. Now, unfortunately for like the first five minutes of this video, uh, the audio is kind of unusable because when I was recording it, I forgot I had my music playing in the background, so I had to kind of take out the audio for this portion. But after the first five minutes, I'll be able to, you'll hear the audio from the game and, you know, it won't be that too big of an issue. But yeah, anyways, getting back to the actual Siege guide. So, now, Siege in itself, I'd say, is a cross between like a King of the Hill from other games and like Missile Assault. As in, the whole point of the game is to, like in Missile Assault, is to kind of assault the enemy opponent's base. Now, how you do that is by launching these giant battleships by re returning uh, these thing, this green stuff called EU, not money, to your base. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But, um, yeah, and then how, like, the King of the Hill aspect comes in is that there's an AA platform generally in the middle of the map, of whichever map that you're playing on, and th the whole point is that you need to hold the AA either in order to protect your own ship that you launched or to shoot down the enemy ship that had launched. Okay, so, as I, just to repeat myself and to make things clear, there's three major things inside of Siege that you need to be aware of. Energy units, which is, or, you know, EU for short, the battleships, and the AA platform. Those are the three things that you really need to pay attention to in this game mode and are the keys to winning. And of course, I'll explain each one in detail. When you begin a Siege game, you're told to go collect energy units in order to launch your battleship, and that's essentially what you need to do. So, there's usually two energy trees on each map, however, on this bunker map, which is actually not an official map, there's only one. But uh, what you essentially do is that you collect energy from these energy trees, and you you basically, and inside the lower, uh, let's see, yeah, the lower right corner, you can see the energy meter, uh, it fills up, depending on how, uh, the weight class of your mech, a classes can hold up to 150, B class is 200, and of course, uh, C classes hold to 250 EU. And what you do is that once you have your EU, you can either get to a full tank or a partial tank, it uh, doesn't matter what. You return to your base, and then there will be little platforms that say, press whatever your interact key is. Mine just happens to be V, although I think on default it is E. You press your interact button in order to return EU to the base. That EU goes into the base and it actually and it adds to the total count that launches your ship. Now, each now each time you have to launch a ship, it'll increase the amount of EU that you need to return. The base amount is 500, and after that it'll increase by 100 each, every time a successive ship is launched. So the second time you launch a ship, it'll be 600. The third time will be 700. So on and so on. And that's how you deal with EU, and that is the purpose of it. And also, there's not just EU that comes from the energy trees that you gather from. There's also EU from fallen battleships that you can collect, and also enemies that are carrying EU. If you shoot an enemy that has EU in its tanks, it'll drop all their EU like a repair charge would. And also, one more thing to note in Siege is that normally in Missile Assault and Deathmatch, and Team Deathmatch, and all the other modes, is that the repair charges are dropped when you kill an enemy. However, in Siege mode, that has been turned off. You, they no longer drop repair orbs when you kill them, but if they have EU in their tanks, they drop EU, and just so you know, collecting EU from fallen uh, enemy mechs or battleships, the collect rate is a lot faster from than the energy trees. So, if you see green EU orbs sitting around on the battlefield, grab those because you'll be able to collect the energy faster than you would at the energy trees. Now, obviously at the, the beginning in these collection phases, the EU portions, which 
do show up on your mini map. It'll show up as like an E1 or an E2. Those are the markings where the EU trees are. Sorry, I didn't mention this sooner. And but uh, these usually tend to be hotly contested areas. And so what you can do is not just uh, not just collect the energy for yourself, but it also another strategy you can do is you can allow enemies to kind of you know do the collecting for you and then kill them so you can get faster energy collection. So as I said. You collect EU from fallen mechs a lot faster, for, you know, because the, the little green orbs, you absorb energy from those a lot faster than you would from the energy trees. And also, one more note before I get onto the battleships is that energy trees, they normally regenerate EU at a, you know, at a fairly decent pace. However, uh, you know, once a battleship is launched, they do not regenerate EU anymore, And but if there's any leftover EU in the EU trees, you can usually try to go grab them if you, if you would like or in order to uh, do some other things, that which I'll explain about later. But right now, I'm going to get onto the battleships, since that's pretty much all you need to really know about the EU. Now, as soon as you collect enough EU to launch a battleship, uh, you know, that comes from collecting uh, uh, from the various mechs, people dumping EU, which you do get awarded points for. And uh, you also, your bases, while there isn't a ship in the air from either side, the ba both bases will slowly generate one EU per second. But as soon as, uh, you know, one base is ready to launch, you know, there'll be like a little uh, notified from your onboard computer that is like uh, the enemy battleship or team battleship is preparing to launch. And the thing you need to know about these battleships is that these are what destroy the enemy bases like a missile assault. It's not the actual points that destroy the bases. Because, like, you know, the AA platform in the middle of the map, that has that has a different function than what the, uh, the missile silos from Missile Assault have. And so, the battleship is what will actually deal damage to the enemy base. And it does that for... And once the battleship, there's a... On the very top of the screen where you see all this stuff, you know, it shows the AA platform and the two, uh, different base healths. You know, the blue one obviously being your, your friendly base and the red one being the enemy base. And then you can see there's like a little flight path, and then you can see a battleship when is when the battleship is in the air. And so what happens is that once the battleship hits 25% uh, of the way across, like, you know, towards the enemy base, it'll start shooting at the enemy base and will deal 8 damage a second. And so what happens with these battleships is that each time it's launched, now the first time it's launched, the battleship has relatively low health. Uh, however, every time a successive battleship is launched, it has more and more health, which is why more and more EU is needed and also helps, you know, to keep battleships in the air longer. And also, the thing with the battleships is that they also have turrets on them, and those turrets, they actually account for 2 damage per second of uh, the 8 damage per second that they deal. So, if, you're, if both of your battleships' turrets get taken out, it'll deal 6 damage per second to an enemy base instead of... Uh, 8 damage per second, so, you know, if you're on the enemy team and the enemy has a battleship in the air, taking out the turrets could be a good idea, that way you can reduce some of the damage to your own base, uh, you know, in order to pr produce its longevity. However, shooting the battleship, and you can actually damage the battleship engines yourself, however, that's not the preferred way to do it. It's much better to go to the AA. And also, and I'll talk about that later, but, and also, bo if, you, if both battleships are in the air, once battleships get close enough, they'll actually engage each other and start shooting at it. And they'll shoot at each other inside the air, and they'll do deal damage to each other. And they do more damage to each other. I think they do about 40 damage a second to each other, uh, uh, to, an, uh, to an enemy battleship, when the, there's more than one in the air. Now, of course, launching battleships is how you win at Siege, but how you keep your team from losing Siege is very different. That comes with capturing the AA. Now, obviously the AA platform is a giant thing marked AA in the middle of the map. And uh, you can also see that in the top, in the middle of the screen, you'll see AA. It'll show you the color of who's got it and how many people are in the AA together. And the more people you have in the AA, the better. E when it's either de attacking or defending, because when your ship is in the air, you want to hold the AA so the enemy team cannot shoot your ship down. And now, when the enemy has a ship in the air, it's even more imperative that you get on the AA, because that's the only way to shoot their ship down. And one person standing in the AA while the enemy ship is in the air, it'll take 20 seconds to launch a missile. So, help that person who's standing in the AA, because just two people will make it 50% faster, and then three people will make it 75% faster. And having more people in the AA will guarantee that the other team won't be able to stop you from launching missiles because the other team is essentially with more people inside of their AA, the defending uh, team, 
And when I say defending team, that means that the, the, the team has their ship in the air and they're trying to grab the AA to defend it. If the defending team has, it's basically minus one offensive team person on top of the AA. Because you need in order to hold the AA, and it's just like a missile assault, except every single time that you launch a missile, you basically have to recapture its the AA kind of becomes neutralized and you essentially have to recapture it. It shows the circle for uh, launching the ship. However, the defending team, if they fill up the circle, the uh, uh, the the uh, offensive team has to empty that circle and then refill the circle with their team color in order to launch the uh, the AA, miss an AA missile. I know that was a lot of information to try and get in there, but I'm going to condense things down to pretty much I'm going to help you figure out when would be a good time to run you and try to launch battleships and when would be a better time to grab AA to grab the AA I'm gonna tell you this right now the AA if you haven't already guessed takes precedence over everything the biggest mistake most people will do is that an enemy gets a ship in the air and they still try to keep collecting EU thinking that launching a ship will help solve their problems no you want to keep on the AA point like I said the AA is what will keep you from losing the A I cannot stress it enough in fact the quotes a famous medic Standing near the point does nothing. GET ON THE POINT, DUMKOFF! And so by me trying to come up with that horrible German accent, you can tell that I'm really trying to get the point across of getting on the AA point. Trust me, you do not want to launch a ship if the enemy ends up taking the AA, because then your ship will just instantly die and you would have launched in vain and you would have wasted a bunch of EU and your team's time. If you had been patient and not launched while the enemy was holding the AA platform and their ship was in the air uh, you would you had would have been able you should have waited until you were able to capture the AA therefore you have a head start on EU and you won't have to nearly gather as much to launch a ship and you have a much better chance of taking the AA for yourself because you do not want to launch when the enemy has the AA trust me when I say this never launch when the enemy has an AA there is only one exception and I will go over that in a little while now, I'm going to tell you this right now, the AA is a lot easier to hold than it is to take, so you want to try to capture the AA early on. Pay attention to your team's EU meter and to your enemy's EU meter. Usually, what my rule of thumb is, if either team's uh, EU score gets to around 100, I immediately go for the AA, because I do not want to risk the enemy team capturing the AA before I can, because like as I said, AA is much easier to defend than it is to assault. Of course, communication is key. You need to make sure that people know to get to the AA. And when you have such a, like, you know, only a certain amount, to make sure you're calling out your EU amounts. That way you know how much is going in. Because once, because you want to make sure that, like, towards the end, only one person is going to drop off that last EU needed to launch that battleship. And the, everyone, and the other five people should be headed to the AA. You never want to have more than one person lo actually physically launching the battleship. Because at because you need everyone at the AA to try and take it before you launch the ship. Because like I said, you want to have the AA before you launch a ship. But now, now I said there is an exception to launching ships where the enemy has a ship in the air and they have the AA point. If your ship is at critical health, like you're, you know, I'd say below like 500 and you need to launch a ship in order to keep the enemy battleship from damaging your own base. But at that point, if you counter launch like that, where critical health, you and your whole team need to rush that point. I mean, rush it like there's a lady waiting for you. Or, uh, never mind, my little sister's in the room. I'm not going to finish that analogy. But my point is that you really need to capture the AA. And rushing the AA, never do it alone. Do it as an entire team. If, you know, most of your team is dead, retreat from the AA, wait for them to respawn and then go and push in with them. And remember, this is an objective game. KD ratio does not matter in this game. If you're worried about your KD ratio, get out. I mean, seriously, this is an objective game. The kill-death ratio does not matter because kill-death kill death ratios do not determine the outcome of the fight. What really matters is your ability to capture the AA point. So if you're fighting on the AA, stay inside the circle. Do not do your best to not leave the AA uh, at any time. Whether you're defending it or assaulting it, try to stay on it as long as you can. The only time where I'd say leaving the point is justified is that when you are defending the AA and your ship is in the air and your team has a solid hold on the AA, then you could maybe send out some flankers and try to take out the enemy and keep them pushed back into their base to keep them from even getting near the AA. But other than that, you should really be on the AA itself. Like, if you're trying to launch missiles to shoot down an enemy ship, 
everyone should be on the AA at that point, because you need everyone as you can to have bodies on the AA to launch missiles and shoot down the enemy ship. I had mentioned that enemy me that uh, mechs can damage the enemy ship. Uh, however, your base defenses are already shooting at the ship and already dealing steady damage toward it, and so over time, it's like. You, you, the ship will, enemy ship will take damage even if you don't have the AA. But unless the onboard computer tells you that the, uh, advises you that the enemy ship is at critical damage, take the AA. Once it says enemy ship is at critical damage, that's the point where it's like, okay, if you know that you can't take the AA in time, that's the point where you just say, okay, team, we need to shoot the ship down. Let's all focus our fire. Otherwise, you know, because one person alone doing it, it just won't cut it. You have to all focus fire. But this is a last resort option. You should always try to go for the AA because each AA missile does 3,200 damage, all your mechs together. Well, you know, unless you all do it together, it's not going to work. Even so, especially later in the game where the ships have much more health, you want to launch AA missiles. And as for running EU, uh, don't abandon the AA until your sh if your ship's in the air, don't abandon it until it has only like, a, you know, a tiny sliver of health left. After that point, you can start running AA. But yeah, this is my introduction to Siege. Uh, I hope other than me just screaming, GET TO THE CHOPPER! I mean, the AA! <laughs> other than me just saying that, I hope you guys actually learned how to, you know, play Siege a little bit more, got a little bit more as far as tactics. If you guys want me to go more in depth, I definitely will, but yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, uh, do what have you. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, but this is Soldier Hobbs signing off.